Hi, I'm George. I'll be showing you how to make a professional style opening intro for your YouTube channel quickly and easily here using the VideoProc Vlogger program. I put together one that's fairly easy to do here, but is very professional looking. Let me just show you this real quickly. I'll just go ahead and I'll play this. This video is sponsored by VideoProc Vlogger, a completely free video editor. You can't get any better than that. No watermarks, no monthly subscriptions, no limits on features, no limits on quality or experts. In my personal opinion, this is the best free video editor available today. Okay, let's take a look and see how this is done. I'll start off with a brand new file. Go up here to the first menu and click on New Project. And over here, right hand side, you can change the name of here if you want to. Let's just call this one YouTube Intro. You can change your location. I'll leave this at the default, which is the standard Video Proc Vlogger Project folder. You can adjust your resolution here, anything from 4K all the way down to something really small down there. I'll be using the 1080p size. You can adjust your frame rate. 30 is the correct rate to go with. She's new project. I'll just save what's in that one. There we go. And here's our brand new project. Now for this project, you'll need to have some still images. And you can find those all over the place. I grabbed some images off of one of my favorite online free image sites, and that's Pixabay. And I'll put a link for that so you can download these images if you want to work along with this video. I already have them on my hard drive. And then to bring them here into the media library, just click on that big plus sign right here. There's my folder, and then we'll use this one. And I'm also going to grab the coffee one down here, and then these two coffee bean shots right there, and then choose open. If you bring in multiple images at the same time, they will come in as a group. You may or may not want that. You can see right here there are four images. To ungroup these, just right click and choose ungroup, and then up here in an ungrouped manner. Pretty easy to do. But if you want to go ahead and save right away, just go up here, click on that button right there, and there it is. If you see that up there and it's orange, then it's available to be saved. If you don't see anything up here, then it doesn't need to be saved at the moment. Notice on your left-hand side right here, we have a video track, overlay track, and an audio track. I'm just going to grab the first coffee image. I'm going to drag it straight down, and it will drop automatically right onto the correct track, which is the video track. Now you can adjust the size of this over here, right hand side, click on this to fit size, or just use these two controls here to zoom in on that. And as you can see there, it simply makes it larger on the screen, larger in the timeline. You're just kind of zooming in on the timeline. Now up here, it's not quite fitting those black bars. That's the size, the full width of our image. It's not quite fitting that, so you need to fix that. On the right hand side, let's close down opacity and color filter. Under transform, I'm going to fit the screen width. It just zooms that in so the width fits. Okay, that's our first image. The second image here is this burlap. Bring that down. Same thing, let's just fit that to width. Third image here is our second coffee bean. Bring that down. And again, fit to width. That fits good. And final one is our coffee mug right there. And same thing, fit to width. Okay, everything is now fitting properly. And we have our basic imagery across the bottom. Now, if I click on this second arrow here, this is a play button. This plays from the beginning of your video track. We'll just see how that looks. And these are just five seconds long for each one of these, and it's going to be a straight cut in between each one. But once you begin to add stuff in, this will get much more exciting. You can stop at any point by hitting the pause button. You can play the playhead from wherever it's at, right here by hitting this button, or you can play from the beginning by hitting that button right there. Just hit the play button. There's the pause button. There it is. You also can scrub back and forth inside of your video track just by grabbing that playhead and then move it back and forth. It's pretty easy to navigate through here. Now, to make this interesting, we want to have some different effects and transitions applied onto this. And we'll first start off with our transitions, which is up here. This is the second button right there. And there are loads of transitions in here, as you can see. And these transitions normally are used. I'll just pull one down here at random. They're normally used to just make a transition between two bits of video. So if I hit the play button right there, there's the transition. It just transitions between those two still images. Now to remove it, just click on that, hit the delete key, and you can then delete that that easily. So it's very easy to work with our transitions. I'll grab a couple of these in here. First off, we'll be using the Venetian blinds as our first transition. That's way down here. Here's our Venetian blinds. Just drag it down like that. And then our next one in here is called grids. And it's right here. I'll just bring that one down. Now you can see the effect by just scrubbing back and forth. That's our Venetian blinds. And then here's that grid thing right in there. Okay, now to use these as effects, as opposed to just these transitions, all you need to do is to grab the side and stretch that 
so it fits over a wider range. Notice how as I pull one side out, the other side automatically stretches as well because they're always even on both sides. But now we have that effect playing over a much longer part of our video. There we go. So you get more of an effect happening as opposed to being just a transition. Okay, let's take these out. Just delete those. Now notice our timeline in here. We have our numbers. There's 5 and there's a 10. Here's a 15, here's a 20. 20 seconds is way too long for an intro nowadays on YouTube. So you need to make these shorter. You can either click on a clip or a still image like this, grab the side and pull that in. You can adjust your size just like that. Just put it down here to about two seconds. That's actually 2.16 seconds right here. Notice how everything else moves over as soon as I did that. If I pull it this way, everything then moves over that way. So everything is always staying connected if you readjust the sizes in here. Now I already know the size I want on these by setting our sizes over here, right hand side. Close down transform at the top here it says time and duration. Bring this open. In here, here's your end time. There's your duration. You can change the duration map down here just by actually typing it in. I'll double click here into the seconds. On our first one I want to have this at one second and then double click in the bit over here and let's set this one at three so we get 1.3 and we'll apply that. And there it is, that's the length for our first bit. This one is just at one second, so it's easy to do. It's five seconds right now. Double click in here, set that at one, hit the apply button. That's now one second and it's right there. And if I grab the play hit here, I can go back and forth. If I come down just below the play hit and grab, I can actually stretch my timeline right there, making it a bit easier to see. Let's pull it out a little bit like that. Go down here, it's our second coffee bean image. This one is the same length as the first one, that's 1.3. So again, come down to duration. Now make sure you see that white outline. That means that that particular clip or that particular still image is selected. Again, it's five seconds to begin with. So I'll double click in here, set that at one, double click over here and set that at three and hit the apply button. Now the final one, you can adjust the final length of this for whatever you want. I know that my intro should be at about six seconds long. So I'll scrap this side and drag it back to that six second point, just like that. We may want to adjust that later on. Now for our transitions, we've already seen the first one, that's our Venetian blind. So I'll go ahead and I'll bring that right back down again here. And I'll pull it over like that, so it's overlapping that division. Now it's too wide at this point. Go back over to the right hand side, you see we now have the duration here for the Venetian blinds effect, that's that. And it's set at two seconds, that's too long. I'm just gonna grab the right side and pull that down a bit here, make that a bit shorter. Just temporarily, we'll adjust the size once we get the rest of our transitions in here. Our second transition is that grids, and that's right there. Let's pull that one straight down. Again, I'll pull it over here, and I'll make that smaller, just to get it in place. Our third transition here is one called Kaleidoscope. That's right here. Same thing. Bring it down, and then just bring it down a bit like that, so it's a bit smaller. Let's now pull our Venetian down like this, just down to the beginning. So we'll use this as an opening blind effect. There it is. So it begins black and opens with the Venetian blinds. Then pull our grids down so you can see how you can actually rearrange or shuffle the location of your effects just by pulling them back and forth. And they don't have to be over transitions like this. They actually can be just by themselves, like I'm using the Venetian blind right there. Let's put one more right down here. And if this one we'll uses mosaic at that point, bring that one down and I'll make that a bit smaller as well. Okay, so there's our basic effects sitting on top of our still image. It's not really ready yet, but this will give us an idea of how the effects transition between those different slides. Hit that play from beginning button. There we go, there's our transition. There's that, there we go, real fast. Notice that these are real short, so the transitions actually happen very quickly. We're gonna slow that down as we stretch these out just a bit. Okay, let's give ourselves some more room to work here. I'll click on our first image here. Hold the control key down and let's click on the rest of our images. They are now all selected. Go over here, hit fit screen. And that just stretches it all out so it fits our screen right there, making it much easier to work with. These need to be bumping into each other right in through here. So you can pull your sides in like this until they touch. There we go. And let's grab them in and they'll bump into each other. That then will give you smooth changes in here between each one of these different effects. Now the length of time in here is going to depend upon the look that you want. We'll go ahead and we'll play this from the beginning again. There it is. There's our basic effects happening in there like that and a still image and I'll pause at that point. Look, okay, let's now just adjust these. Oh, this one is a little bit longer than it is. Easy way is just to click over here in grids. So I'll pull this side in a little bit and we can then pull this side over. And you can go back and forth like that and take it the feel that you want in there. I already know my numbers, so I'll go ahead and we'll use those. Click on the grids. Now everything else is kind of based off of the grids here. The grids I want fairly short at 0.74. Right now it's up here at 0.79. So I'll click in here and let's just set this to a 74 and apply. 
There it is. And it'll go to the Venetian blinds, so it bumps up against the grids. Same thing over here. This is the length I want. And I'll pull the kaleidoscope over to the left until that bumps up against that. Now it's hitting this mosaic, so I'm going to pull the mosaic back a bit first because it does stretch on both sides. So I'll pull this over like that. There we go. Now if you want to have a still image in here without anything changing for a moment, you can do that just by pulling the kaleidoscope away. There we go. So giving you a little bit of space right here. Now we'll be using this as a title card. We'll be showing our title first when this screen shows up. So having it clear for just a moment is not a bad thing for us to do. Then it pulls in so it's kind of close to that, but not exactly on. So just like that. So just for a moment, we have a still image in here with our text on top. This will look really nice. Plus we'll be adding another effect on top of everything else, which will make this even better. So now check our length on our kaleidoscope. And that's at 1.20. That's good. Now the mosaic, again, I want to have this beginning right when kaleidoscope ends. So I'll just pull this back to fit. That side switches out automatically. And there we go. We have our effects in place. And it's looking pretty good. We have those transitions acting like effects and giving us a nice sense of animation in here. But we can go a bit further. It's up here under effects. There are lots of different effects you can add into video. Now this comes in as an overlay and then overlay it on top of your video. Look at just a few of these. Here's a colorful bubbles, for instance. If I double click on that, you can see the effect. There it is. It just adds kind of a bubble effect in there. We have fire effect across the bottom, just like that. And fireworks and glitch. A lot of different things in here that can be pretty interesting. Some of these are going to be just a still image, like pencil sketch. We'll just be using just one. And that's our ghost effect right here. Let me just bring that in. It's just a little bit of an effect like that. It just adds a little something extra onto the video. Okay, I'll pull that down. Notice how it drops automatically onto the effect track right down here. I'll pull it to the beginning. Now, I don't want this to go clear through to the end of our video. I want to have some still video down here. At this point, this is cutting off at five seconds. That's the default length, and that's good for us. It gives us five seconds of an effect down towards the end, and then one second of a still image after that. And let's see how this looks. I'll click on the play button here, play from start. And you see that kind of a additional effect happening in there. It's just a little more something giving a bit more of a professional look to it. We're now ready for some text onto our intro. Let's come down here where it says text. Click on that and here you can work with this right hand side. Now this is your text section. You add your text right in here. Just select that and type that in. So we'll go ahead and we'll type in a good day. Enter key begins with dot dot dot. Now notice how it's not fitting. Just grab a corner here and you can pull that out until the whole thing fits properly. This also changes your size as you can see there and pull that down. There we go. There is that overall text. Have a good day begins with. That works. Now it's off to the left hand side. I want to have that actually aligned better than that. This right here, there's a line center. That looks good. And then we'll just kind of visually align that into our space. Now we don't see any video behind this yet. We'll see that once we get this all set. But first I want to change the type face in here. So I'm just going to come over here again, select our text right hand side. You want to change the type style here. Click on that down arrow. Now here you'll be seeing all the fonts on your computer. Your list will be different than my list. This is stuff I've been collecting over years. So you may need to choose a different typeface than what I'm using. But the one I'll go for here is the Gil Sands Ultra Bold Condensed. That's just like that. I kind of like that one. Now it's regular. If this had more styles, it'd be showing here. At this point, the size here is 148. You can actually type in a specific size if you want to. That one's fine for us. It's a good size. And then over here is your color for your type. Just click on that. You can choose any color you want off of that color wheel. We'll stick with the white. And we'll close that down. Okay, so that's looking good. Just now come down here and you'll see there is your type. I'm just going to pull this in and we'll back up a little bit like that. It also comes down here where it says subtitle track. If I scroll up, you can see here's everything else up above. If I bring the playhead back over here, there's our text sitting on top. Kind of find a good spot. So over in here, we're beginning to get our line showing up. And when it gets just about like there, just heavy enough, that's a good spot. I'll bring in that text at that point. I'll slide that in and fit to that spot. There we go. Our text comes in right here. And we'll zoom back out a bit so it's easier to see. There we go. And the text goes clear down to the end of our track right down there. So it's just about five seconds long, beginning as we begin to get into that burlap showing right there. So now see how that looks. Hit the play button from the beginning. There we go. There comes the text. And that stays on top, clear through the rest of that. If you want your text to leave before the end, just pull your text back a bit. Let's bring it back just three seconds. And from beginning again, here we go. There's the text comes in. And right down towards the end, it's going to go out just a second. 
there it is, and it leaves you with that still image. Okay, one more thing to fix here is this shadow, this drop shadow. It's kind of blue right now. I don't like that. I want it to match our image better. So for that, let's just collapse our text up here and that space, text border. And here is our text shadow. Let's come down and take a look at this. You can adjust your offset. That's how far away the text is from the letters. You can blur your shadow down here if you want to. You can also change your direction. I'll use the bottom right hand corner. I think that's a bit better. And let's change that coloration in there. For that, click on the color right here. It brings up the color picker. Choose any color that you want or better still. Come down here and choose that eyedropper tool right there and then click on a shadow in your image. There it is. Choose done. And our shadow now matches the shadows in the image. So real good match on that. Okay, the next thing is to finish this off by putting in some music behind this whole title sequence. Now I found a real nice kind of a jazz piece. We'll use just the opening for that jazz piece. And I found that on the YouTube Music Library. So go over here to Add Music. And I've added it here into my video product folder. This is just a folder I'm using to collect my imagery and so forth, my media. So I have it all in one location. George Street Shuffle, it's an MP3 file. Now this kind of cone shape thing, that just means that I have my computer set up to automatically play music using the VLC media player. That's all that is. If you use a different media player, you get a different icon on there. Don't worry about that. Choose open. And there we go. Now you can play this just by double clicking on this. It'll then play that bit right here inside of the video product blogger. Click on pause. And then we'll put this into the video same exact way. Just drag it straight down, drop it on. I want it beginning at the beginning. That's fine. And then I'll pull my playhead way down here towards the end. Just like that. There's the end of our clip. Now, obviously, it's a whole music piece. It's way too long for us. It's, you know, a few minutes long. We only need to have six seconds in here. So put your playhead right here. And then go up here, click on the split button, and then simply hit and delete that last bit. Okay, now it matches the length of everything else, but it's just kind of chopping off at that end. So I want to have this ending smoothly with a fade out. Go up here where it says audio, click on that, brings up the audio editor. In here I want to fade out or about the last second, I think. So these are seconds, one second, two, three, four, five, and six. Come in here where it says five, and right about here, just pull like that, and that selects a range. And then right above here, just choose Fade Out. It just fades that out to that six second point. Okay, that's good. Click on the Apply button. And there's now a nice fade out for our music. Okay, so this whole thing looks together. Hit the Play From Beginning button right there. And when you finish your work, make sure you save that. Click on the Save button up there. There we go, Save successfully. When I need to export this out to be able to use it in front of our YouTube videos. So go over here where it says export. Click on that. Brings over export settings. Now you want to go here where it says high quality engine. Click on that one. You may want to compress your final video before going up onto YouTube. But at this stage, you want to retain all the quality that you possibly can. So make sure you have that checked. Left hand side, give it a name. We've already done that when we started this. Save to. I'll leave it at the default settings in here. You can choose your format right down here. MP4 is fine. You can double check your video codec, your frames per second, your audio and so forth, but this all should be just fine for you. And then simply click on start. It's then going to save it to that MP4 file format for use in your videos on YouTube. And if you want to get this program for yourself, again, free download. You'll find a link for that in my description right at the top of my description right down below there. Make sure to click on like, share, and subscribe for my channel, and I'll see you next time.